we call upon this Congress to understand the moral urgency of immigration reform, the urgency of keeping families together, the urgency of those who cannot get critical health care or are at the mercy of criminals, those who are living in the shadows of fear and insecurity. That is urgent for us. The urgency of our scriptures who say that as we treat the stranger is how we treat Christ himself and we will be held accountable to that. For us, as evangelical Christian leaders listening to churches and pastors all around the country, we recognize that this is not just a political issue, it's a personal issue. It's one of the reasons why many of the people concerned about this have been on a personal uh, journey toward a change of mind here, because they've seen not just abstract issues, but real persons, our brothers and sisters in Christ, who are being harmed and hurt by a system that is broken. It does it does uh, your part of the uh, Southern Baptist Convention speak, do you think, for the grassroots on this issue? I think so. I think that uh, people in our churches, pastors in our churches, are grappling with how do we minister to immigrant communities who are in our pews. Uh, what do we do? That doesn't mean that we all come to the same uh, conclusion about step by step how do we get there. Uh, but I think we recognize there is a problem and that we need to fix it. Uh, I think that's true. No one that speaks for all Southern Baptists and Southern Baptist life. You can ask anyone who's been around a Baptist church. Each church is autonomous from the next church, whether it's the association, the state, the national, and even all the agencies like the Ethics and Religious Liberty Committee. Uh, it's a great group. He's doing a good job as a leader. He's trying to fulfill the best he understands the whole of it, but no one can really step in and speak for Southern Baptists. Each individual member will make decisions on what they want to do. Uh, especially with an issue like immigration. Uh, I don't think scripture gives us a blueprint for immigration reform. I think what scripture does give us is a call to compassion uh, for those who are vulnerable. And I think what we see right now is that we're living in a world that is unjust and, and, and really unfair and, and isn't upholding the rule of law. The status quo, the way we have it right now, uh, simply is winking at people coming into the country with no accountability and then leaving them in invisibility in ways in which they they can be uh, exploited. It's an exploitable amnesty uh, that we see right now. And scripture tells us we need to be listening to the cries of the vulnerable, to the cries of, of those who are being harmed. Uh, I, I think that doesn't give us a blueprint, but it does give us uh, a sense of, of moral address. This is a moral issue. This is a public policy issue. Uh, this is also a faith issue because you've got individuals uh, that are um, uh, disconnected, I guess, from the rest of the society. There's a, a biblical mandate to be able to reach out to those that are the orphans, the widows in their, in their distress, to take care of the stranger in your land, uh, but that does not mean citizenship in that. Uh, so there is this push of some people that would say, because we have a moral responsibility to take care of those in need, you also extend to them all these different things. That, that's not true of most Southern Baptists in that. So a couple things to, to, uh, to process through just in, in faith life among evangelicals. One is that I firmly believe that every person is created in the image of God. Every person has value on the planet. Every individual uh, must be respected and honored and, that, and they're a valuable person. Uh, but within Christian life as well, reconciliation is a very big deal. And a lot of the push from Southern Baptists and their leadership is how do these individuals be reconciled, be made right with the law. Uh, they're kind of stranded at this point where some of them, if they go home, they're in violation of the law. If they stay here, they're in violation of the law. How do they be made right with the law in whatever location that they go? Uh, so that is a part of this that's a moral issue as well as a social and public policy issue about individuals, whether they're paying fines, uh, whether they're finding some way to have some kind of registration, it may not be citizenship, it may be some sort of designation as a deferred status, whatever that may be, so they can come out of the shadows and have an opportunity to be made right with the law. Most of us in this country agree the system is broken. Most of us in this country agree we have to have some way of addressing the 11 or so million people who are living in invisibility right now. I think there's a great deal of consensus about that in this country that probably would not have existed at previous times when this question has come forward. I also think that many of the people who would be reluctant right now are reluctant because of genuine concerns that we share. Uh, they want to make sure that the process is done right so it doesn't have to be done again uh, in, in the future. We think that can be done. They want to make sure there's accountability for people who have come here illegally, uh, that they are held accountable to the full responsibilities of citizenship. We share that concern and we think there's a way forward there.
And they also want to make sure that we have borders that are secure and a rule of law that is upheld. We share that concern as well, and we also think there's a way forward there. I don't run into anyone that says our immigration system is working really well. No one seems to believe this immigration system is working well. So my focus is let's identify the broken things and let's try to work towards fixing broken things, but not try to create new problems in the process. Let's find a way to fix the broken things and repair a system. That is our constitutional mandate. Article 1, Section 8 requires that Congress has a system of naturalization. Uh, we don't have a good system of that right now. We've got to be able to resolve that. We have five bills already that the House has passed. Uh, dealing with border enforcement, uh, dealing with state laws, dealing with the E-Verify for employers, uh, dealing with agricultural workers. Uh, all of those things are very important to us uh, to get done and be done right. So five different committee times, five different bills that have already come through. Uh, none of those have come to the floor yet. They've all gone through the committee process. We still have multiple other bills that will have to work their way through committee. We're, we're addressing this very, very different than how the Senate did it. The Senate had one hearing, one committee, pushed it to the floor, got something passed, and went to this big comprehensive report. We just don't. We feel like this is a very significant issue that you've got to take a piece at a time and you've got to work your way methodically through it.